Okay. So a very good afternoon to our uh, respected uh, resource person for today, Professor K. Srinivas, and our dear participants who have uh, been with us uh, throughout this journey of the one week uh, faculty development program on National Education Policy 2020. Welcome to day six of this uh, faculty development program. So today we have with us Pro Professor K. Srinivas and sir will be de uh, delivering a lecture on uh, national education policy as well as blended learning. But before I invite sir to take over the session, I would take this uh, privilege to invite uh, to uh, introduce sir with all the participants here. So Professor K. Srinivas uh, is the head of ICT and project management unit of National Institute of Educational Planning and Administration, NEPA, a government of India Ministry of Education institution in New Delhi. Professor K. Srinivas holds a PhD degree in computer science and has been utilizing open source ICT tools and technologies in teaching, learning, and student evaluation since 1990, both at the graduate and postgraduate levels. His areas of interest include e-learning, blended learning, MOOCs, ICT, pedagogy, computer applications, and the list goes endless. Sir has more than 30 years of teaching, research, industry, and consultancy experience. Professor K. Srinivas is the member of the Board of Studies of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, SRM University, Sonipat. He is a member of the Working Group on Technical Architecture and Standards for National Digital Education Architecture for School Education and Literacy. He is also a member of the Research Innovation and Quality Improvement Project under RUSA, awarded by Ministry of Education, Government of India, to Mohanlal Sukhadia University, Udaipur. Sir is also an external advisor to, to the SWAM board, Hemvati Nandan Bahuguna Garhwal University, Srinagar. Professor Srinivas is a valuable resource person and he delivers skill-based technical courses across the country for faculty enrichment programs, be it FDPs, FIPs, refresher courses. He also conducts teacher training workshops, both at school education and higher education across the country for teachers. Sir has a number of articles to his credit on different aspects of university governance, automation, training, etc. The Teaching Learning Center at Ramanujan College, uh, we are highly indebted to you, sir, for taking your time, sparing your invaluable time and taking this session. I would now request you, sir, to <coughs> take over the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nidhi, uh, for the introduction. And uh, good afternoon, friends. Uh, Thank you very much for uh, being with us, with you people, uh, to spend the next 90 minutes on. Uh, very important uh, for all of us uh, as teachers um, in this topic on uh, the reference to the uh, blended learning in uh, the new educational policy and uh, the strategies for the implementation. That is the basically the idea of uh, I express my sincere gratitude to Ramarajan College Teaching Learning Center for inviting me and uh, to be part of this uh, workshop. Okay, um, what is uh, the requirement? You, you have been hearing about a uh, lot of things about uh, the, you know, for the last one and a half year. <clears throat> we, we have been teaching, uh, we have been interacting with our learners, or uh, in other words, using the online mode of uh, delivery. And in last uh, uh, couple of months, uh, we started feeling something is not uh, the correct the way it is being done. Uh, so, so there is a lot of uh, suggestions, comments, you know, are coming across the India, and even across the world also. Everybody is saying, no, 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 this this is not the correct way. This is not the better one. And earlier, teacher was there only in the four walls of the classroom. Now the teacher has moved to the <clears throat> living rooms of the students. So. Uh, what is important uh, for me um, as a teacher? So apart from uh, delivering a quality lecture, and also uh, you know the, we had to listen to the uh, the parents, uh, the, uh, the you know uh, the, the spouse, and so on and so forth. There are so many people are around, and uh, and everybody is saying that no, this is not the way. This is not the way. The only best way is uh, face to face. Yes, completely agree. 
I'm, I'm the first person to see that face-to-face uh, uh, -face is the best and pen and paper examination is the best. But given, given the situation, given the, um, the, the practical uh, scenario which we have been facing across India, which is not so feasible, and uh, thanks to uh, the system, I think uh, there is some improvement is coming up. So <clears throat> in this context, then uh, that is one part of it, my discussion. So uh, for example, if the colleges have opened, then uh, definitely we can go and uh, and we have been hearing that limited part of the uh, you know so some sometimes the college will open sometimes it has to happen in uh, offline mode and online mode so on and so forth. So keeping in view of this uh, this peculiar situation uh, which is happening with all of us, I'm I'm also not exceptional. I, all of us are facing that. So what is important for us to, uh, how do we cope up with this one? And practically you need to understand that this mode of teaching, uh, of course, I've been doing for the last almost uh, 10 to 12 years. And um, so I'm going to show you, uh, it's, it's not a theoretical uh, part and practically show you that how exactly I have implemented with a zero costing solution, uh, this blended mode of teaching. That's one part of my discussion. I'll show you that. Second part is, <clears throat> you all know very well uh, about uh, the MOOCs initiative. The government of India started five years back. So, so they are also looking for a good, committed, passionate faculty members um, to come forward and uh, submit a proposal to the Swayam initiative. So, so there are certain components which I'll be dealing uh, today in, my, in this class can be connection with that one also. So I started with the two important objectives. One is immediate and my short term objective is how to improve the way we have been teaching currently. I'm talking about the current mode of teaching. How do we improve? And uh, in the event of uh, colleges or institutions have reopened partially and what is the way one can go about and uh, how do we and what extent the technology could be used? One of the important points I wish, wish to make, uh, technology is only enabler. I look technology as an enabler. I look the technology as a facilitator. But uh, I, I, I never see that only because of the technology things are going to happen. Because technology is definitely because it is the only option which is available for us for the last one and a half year. And of course, uh, you know, probably, but what we want to see that what extent the technology should be used to in our teaching, learning and assessment process at the same time, at the same time, one of the important statements, which I just want to make it, uh, teacher is a supreme and without teacher, nothing is going to happen. And all these things are supporting uh, to the teaching learning process. That's all. And, and they cannot independently, even though a lot of initiatives and in technology, more initiatives have been happening. So uh, if, 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 you, if you want to make uh, this one <clears throat> a good, wonderful supporting system to the teaching learning process. Um, so one thing please need to understand very clearly, the effectiveness of the technology. Technology means I'm not talking about uh, only tools, I'm talking about the techniques also is directly proportional to the competence building and uh, building the positive intent and uh, attitude of the teacher. So, so, so it's not only the competence building, it's an attitude building is also because, you know, we are all facing a very, very peculiar situation. Initially, we thought it will last for uh, uh, one month, the Corona situation. Now, almost <clears throat> one year completed and second year also going to be over and will be like this. So, so we want to see that we need to we need to think some out of the box uh, methods, and we'll see that what best uh, we could able to meet, uh, we could able to interact and uh, facilitate the teaching learning process. Uh, with this con with this background, I'm starting a presentation, a small presentation. I have brought it for you, and <clears throat> I will be sharing that presentation with you. And uh, one of the important thing which I just want to uh, request to you all, and uh, there is a chat box and. Uh, I believe in that, uh, you know, if you have any specific doubt uh, uh, anywhere uh, during this session and you are free to post the questions, comments uh, in the chat box so that I'll try to uh, reply uh, then and there itself. Okay. <clears throat> so the, the title of my presentation 
which i which i takes uh, is building the competencies of teachers for uh, blended learning uh, courses a step by step approach okay i divided my talk into three important uh, <coughs> three important components first of all i look at uh, uh, what are the issues and challenges we have been facing currently and uh, thanks to this corona it has opened a lot of things and it is pertaining to hardware part it is pertaining to the attitudinal part of the teacher it is pertaining to the training of the teacher and so on and so forth even and these things uh, applies for the students also there are places the network is a big issue and so on and so forth i am i am completely aware of uh, uh, the 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 practical real time problems which have been happening i am not talking about uh, other places even in places like delhi even in places like delhi we are having it but at the same time <clears throat> that we are and so so we are all doing our best whatever uh, uh, could be uh, possible with us the second point is uh, in the reference of the new educational policy and there is there is a very good reference about uh, this blended learning context in the educational policy to the reference of that uh, policy statement so what was the <clears throat> strategies and we need to understand first <clears throat> sorry we need to understand first uh, uh, the blended learning and 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 its uh, components and what are the things are expected to be done uh, with the, in, in that context and the third important uh, thing is that then then the, the implementation strategies what are those competencies so it's easy to say uh, of course theoretically blended learning is uh, easy blended learning is so much effective but what is important to us there is there are certain uh, uh, processes and tools and techniques and very very importantly it's a well planned uh, strategy so so what are those things which are required to be done i will i will be taking through uh, this is the way i plan my uh, my my session as such into this one okay let me start with uh, uh, you, you you all can able to see <clears throat> the uh, on on your screen uh, there is a a portal and you know this is my learning portal which i call this one as uh, professor k shrinivas learning portal um, this is one of the important component of my classroom teaching my 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 my, my mode of teaching <clears throat> and uh, this is uh, one of the very very important component which i have been using uh quite some time quite some time more than 10 plus years so this uh, this platform whatever you could able to see is is an integral part of my teaching learning and assessment process which supports and which uh, allows the uh, interactions and activities of my students outside the classroom environment so there are two important parts which i will be talking one is in class learning inside the classroom the four walls of the classroom and other one is the out of the classroom so for this 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 platform which you could able to see is supporting my learners uh, for the out of the classroom activities and both in class activities and out of the classroom activities are properly connected <clears throat> and and synchronized this part of so so what are uh, who are the people uh, when, when the moment i think many of you must have been opened uh, a tab and uh, you must have type uh, uh, typed uh, professor k shrinivas dot in uh, in that uh, in the tab and it looks like and you know some of you must have seen my photograph and on the right side the albert einstein some quotes so on and so forth and some links you could able to see on your screen okay and uh, so the screen which uh, it, it, what, what is uh, showing on your uh, computer is uh, the one which a general uh, learner can able to access uh, in my site okay this is meant for the journal learners uh, so that you know <clears throat> so who are this journal journal uh, people you know the learners means uh, those who know about uh, my site are like for example if i introduce my site you can come and see so so the purpose of uh, such people is only for the information dissemination purpose so people generally used to ask me sir can you share your ppt um, you know the uh, people are asking me can you share your resume and so on and so forth and some reading material 
so this is the way where uh, for this uh, journal learners like you and uh, i have provided uh, i have enabled the guest access guest access on my system so that any guest can come and uh, whatever the material which i have been uh, provided for the general public can be able to access that this is one set of people and there is and uh, and of course for this uh, for the learned colleagues like you i am not going to monitor i am not going to monitor your progression i am not going to monitor your progression that uh, what material you have now at least that statistics i am having but uh, i am not going to see that what uh, material you have downloaded and uh, you know what uh, how much benefit you got is it supported your learning also on and so forth this kind of analytics i am not uh, doing that that's that's one part of it so the, then second set of people are my students so uh, the the institution where i have been uh, working and of course uh, the wherever i am uh, i am doing some other adjunct uh, activities so those students are there in this uh, platform also but the difference is and they the, and they are all enrolled um, in, in specific courses and with a specific duration okay and uh, their activities the out of the classroom activities are properly connected with uh, in classroom activities because these students i am meeting uh, face to face and this is that is prior to the covid uh, first lockdown now we have been meeting in a virtual mode but uh, that in class activities and out of the classroom activities are synced in such a way that and before the class uh they, they they were given certain prerequisites to complete to attend and once my class is over my face to face class is over they will be given a certain task and so and they, the support i will extending throughout them so it's not only the support and meeting the students only inside the classroom when the doubts are clarified but even outside the classroom also and it's not only myself and and we have a team of uh, you know uh, my some of my students some of my research scholars also get engaged uh, with with the students so that uh, uh, we all of us are facilitating uh, to each other to learn so this is about uh, the the the, uh, the, the, the related to this uh, portal okay before proceeding further dr nidhi my my screen is visible and my voice is audible uh, could you please confirm could you please confirm my my screen is visible and my voice is audible uh any one of you friends i think uh, can can the participants confirm to me in the chat box uh, my screen is visible yeah thank you yes, very sir, much sir your screen is visible sir yeah i'm i'm asking that yeah, thank you thank you very much thank you very much okay so so uh, you see this is the <clears throat> this is the way this process can be done and you must all must be thinking that uh, uh, <clears throat> okay let me come back to <clears throat> this was the scenario when i have been using the pre covid time and uh, when when the first lockdown has been announced the only difference uh, which was happened is uh, the class work has been stopped that means the face to face interaction has been stopped and it has been replaced by this uh, synchronous uh, uh, platforms uh, like synchronous learning platforms like uh, zoom or google meet of course we are using google meet and so on and so forth and but that that outside the classroom act because because of the pandemic situation it has been restricted to only this part of it so for the outside the classroom activities uh, the, uh, the the uh, the accessing through the portal will continue and uh, this is where i i am going to talk uh, probably if the time permits at the end of at the at the back end of my presentation how exactly this has been done how this what is this learning management system Uh, and and how simple it is and it's it's a zero costing solution you need not invest any money or anything on this and uh, because currently the kind of scenario which you could able to see so that that that's the first part of the discussion 
so the com the, the point is that and it, it's not so you know many of you must be thinking that uh, yo so look i think we can also do the same thing and it's it's very easily to implementable thing and it's not so difficult as such and uh, and it all depends on uh, that there are two important things first and foremost thing we need to have a proper understanding of the word that blended learning and also we need to see that what extent the technology could be used to make it uh, uh, you know perfect of that so the, the the very important point which i just want to bring to your kind attention the uh, adapting the change that is the need of the other so how quickly we do adapt and and uh, so that you know we can we can uh, we, we can use it so um, pertinent to the current situation and also we can see that uh, we we'll, uh, let us let us make use of this pandemic period as an opportunity and relevant to the present situation and that is um, and whenever you find time please read the book by dr spencer johnson and uh, the title of the book is who moved by cheese very nicely explained about uh, the change management and so on and so forth okay and uh, of course so what is the need of the other the need of the other is uh, how quickly we need to learn uh, and uh, and how quickly we need to adapt the situation and and at the same time because we are all teachers we know very well that it's not only the classroom lecturing is not enough we need to have a lab related activities uh, we need to have uh, you know other um, uh, uh, other other activities and so on and so forth okay like engineering uh, <clears throat> faculty they are, their requirements are different and science uh, social sciences requirements are different so whatever i've been saying giving this particular scenario <clears throat> what is important to me how um, you know the, the, the mantra of this uh, 21st century is uh, learn unlearn and relearn and of course uh, the collaborative learning okay so that is where we need to look into this and uh, thanks to this covid it has brought uh, and since last march uh, to since almost uh, till yesterday evening uh, i had a chance to interact uh, with around uh, 37000 people <clears throat> across india and various uh, mostly faculty development programs webinars seminars and so on and so forth and what i have noticed that uh, there are certain important factors there are so many factors are there but there are certain important factors where uh, which, which has been flagged by these people and i'm not talking about only it it, it has a issue with the teachers it has an issue with the students also uh, something related to poor technological infrastructure of course that has been and uh, in the new educational policy under uh, uh, there is a special head into this and government of india is seriously working on uh, to do this and lack of institutional support in some cases it has been noticed that uh, yes uh, institutional support is again uh, very very much uh, important and uh, people are expecting uh, certain kind of a support and institutional culture and support is also very much important and uh, uh, then then the certain section of the people not convinced about the quality of delivery and assessment yes i completely agree with that yes i think they have been saying that no 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 online is not at all uh, uh, feasible uh, to certain fine i completely agree but my question is so what is the solution and right now there is the situation was not feasible to conduct face to face classes call the students call the faculty and uh, we don't and and of course the um, the vaccination drive is on so so uh, so right now currently this is the method but i completely agree with the, i'm i'm agreeing this but at the same time i'm also telling them the, this online mode of delivery means it's not only lecturing method <clears throat> and it's not only lecturing and showing a powerpoint presentation sharing the ppts and kind of providing <clears throat> interaction with the whatsapps and uh, conducting the google form for the examination that's not the one and one can go beyond that where which lot of things need to be done so what is important in this context the answer to the point number 3 is Uh, this this particular process need to evolve more and we need to share our experiences to the people so that uh, what best can be possible i am not saying that everything and teaching learning is a very uh, dynamic thing and uh, you know everyone is a different uh, way that uh, teaching can happen 
But at the same time, whatever the process and procedures are right now available, we can do the needful as such. Point number two is lack of enthusiasm to learn new methods and techniques. Yes, certain section of faculty member, but there are wonderful teachers in conventional classroom uh, method. <clears throat> so that means they, they there is something is um, stopping them to learn, or maybe their initial uh, interaction with the technology mediated teaching learning process. <clears throat> whether it is uh, facing the camera, whether it is a content development, whether it's a content delivery, whether it's a, a transaction of this part, all these things probably they, they must have not given a proper uh, uh, proper way of interaction must have not. But but they, 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 they are the excellent faculty members in, in, in conventional classroom teaching. I think we should, uh, we all, they, they all should be, um, I, I'm not talking about the levels here not only the assistant professor, associate professor or professor, all teaching faculty, I'm not at a respective of the levels. So, so the proper orientation is definitely needed. <clears throat> this is where the faculty development programs are definitely need of the other. Let me bring uh, two smallest innovations, which I implemented for the last uh, uh, seven to eight years in my own institution, uh, my own training programs in my institution. Uh, one of the thing is, I think during that time, the WhatsApp has been um, started and people were started using the WhatsApp. There is no such so many forwarders who got me there. So what I did, uh, um, so generally our programs are six days. It's a face to face programs. I'm talking about uh, in my institution, NEPA. Uh, before at least four days before the start of the workshop, I used to create a WhatsApp group. And earlier it used to be a Google group or WhatsApp group. And uh, now WhatsApp is more uh, popular um, among the academia and with the students also. Uh, so that uh, the four days before the entire timetable, the format, the instructions and the expectations, the format, the instructions <clears throat> and the explanation will be shared with all the faculty members well in advance and what they were expected to do, including the assessment part, including the assignment part, including the day-wise activities and so on and so forth. And of course, six day workshop is very much there and, uh, and assessment mostly on the peer reviewed basis and all. And after the workshop is over, <clears throat> it's not the six days thing. After that six days are over, I am extended the support to these faculty members 30 days beyond uh, the workshop time is over. And initially, I was a little skeptic that whether the people will take. But uh, to my surprise, friends, there are there are almost uh, I'm part of around 700 plus WhatsApp groups and 150 Telegram groups and all. We are they are all keenly participating and sharing their experiences <clears throat> and try to implement to their extent possible in the system. I think so. That's what I've been saying. And but there are certain um, conditionalities are there to be part of that group no no forwarders are allowed no good morning messages are allowed and uh, only three things are four things are allowed learning and learning and relearning and of course uh, supporting the collaborative that <clears throat> so that <clears throat> in this process what happened and uh, so so the technology could be useful for that and uh, and many people many of you must be thinking that 700 groups this is what's crazy about that because once we are not getting any nonsense forwarders and uh, no nonsense messages or good morning, good afternoons and good evenings and good nights and uh, not making, uh, you know, other things. So, of course, uh, we, uh, so there is just, there is no such uh, nuisance element was there. And, and people are very serious enough and people are very uh, sincerely participating that I think that is one part. The second important uh, part of uh, that uh, session is and uh, you know uh, so my my session was generally whether it is a face to face uh, workshop uh, or or uh, the uh, online mode of uh, classes uh, what is uh, what is important to me that uh, i made the four components my session of 90 minutes generally would be the four components uh, there is a lecture component uh, there is a discussion component uh, there is a demonstration component there is a hands on component 
so so you must be thinking that how come the hands on can happen of course because uh, i have been interacting with them uh, before the class and all the installations of the softwares and uh, and uh, the assignment which was supposed to be done whether it's a content development whether it's a content delivery whether our assignment prepar uh, assessments preparation are whether related to the discussion forum kind of so on and so forth everything has to be completed there so that they will practically doing the application part in front of me and the output will be shared on the on the screens as such and at the same time and they there so so that the mm, uh, that six days program uh, like uh, almost six hours in a day and it will be starting in the morning and it's ending up in the evening so what i'm trying to say that i think this kind of a support is definitely required for the faculty members to do the needful as such of course and uh, you know teachers have no prior online teaching experience absolutely correct so they must have attended the orientation programs and refresher courses and special programs on mm, MOOCs development online course development so on and so forth but suddenly they have not uh, seen that how exactly that this is what typically we want to see <clears throat> in my further slides so uh, but what are the focused areas where training is required uh, and again, as, as I already mentioned to you, that whether uh, this logic applies for the blended learning, this logic applies for the online courses, and this same logic applies for the MOOCs courses also. Uh, first and foremost thing, uh, what is important is, uh, you know, understanding the, the ecosystem. Okay, what is the blended learning and what is the ecosystem? What are the components? Okay, because since it is a part of the talk of the blended learning, the same logic applies for the online as well as this. And then next comes the pedagogies. What are the pedagogical approaches which we are going to use in this case? Then third important thing is about the resources and uh, where are the resources available? And uh, you know, the resources are required some for the core resources, some are for the supplementary resources. And uh, unfortunately, uh, somehow we were tuned in such a way that only resources means we had to create it. Yes, of course, I completely agree with you that, uh, uh, but, but the point is if uh, the resources need to be available in, uh, in a typical Indian languages that need to be, but when your course is uh, in English, so there are excellent resources that are already available in the public domain. Um, and the government of India is facilitating the digital initiatives, like there are so many archival course contents are available, we can take. Second one, the Creative Commons um, Open Educational Resources. So this knowledge is also very much required for the faculty colleagues. Then comes the uh, student learning outcomes and then what was the strategies need to be adopted. Interaction with the learners also. Uh, because uh, in, inside the classroom is perfectly okay because the student can ask the question and there is an eye to eye contact. But what about the outside the classroom activities? And uh, the, the, the more you interact, the more you facilitate the naturally the student uh, because you know all all of them are not in the same learning uh, uh, styles in the class there are slow learners there are average learners there are gifted learners and many other problems are there so we want to see that then also we look at uh, uh, several ict tools uh, which is supporting this blended learning environment and of course if you look at uh, the the list and you know there are um, so what i think this kind of orientation is very much required for the faculty like for example if you look at synchronous learning tools asynchronous learning tools collaborative learning tools content development tools the sticky notes tools shared document tools concept mapping and mind mapping tools comprehensive activity tools interactive presentation tools and of course the formative and summative assessment tools so 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 many options are available nowadays if you look at and, and very importantly, majority of these tools are easy to use. And uh, so, so how can I say that, that, that you may ask me a question that how can you say that it's easy to use? You need to, if you spend at least half an hour for yourself every day, start understanding some of the tools and some of the you know, features of the tools and try to see that how this tool can be helpful <clears throat> for me and to interact my students, uh, some may be inside the classroom, some may be outside the classroom. I think this could be the need of the hour. I'm not saying it's a completely, and these tools cannot work on their own. Please try to understand. It is again the teacher who is a supreme in this area. And again and again, I've been saying that uh, a teacher is an indispensable part of the teaching learning process. Without teacher, no technology is going to help. And second point is uh, technology is an enabler. That's all. Technology is a facilitator. 
technologies to provide uh, uh, reaching the unreach that's all and but all these things starting from the designing the um, uh, class to the development of the course content to the using the delivery platforms or the course transaction assessment preparation and interacting with the student it's all the teacher 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 but what is happening is there are certain nice tools are available which enhances uh, what teacher can do uh, that this is where uh, i am pitching the ict tools of the blended learn and because since uh, it's, it's a technology related part so i just want to say that uh, technology is, uh, is is basically a means it's not an end that is first important statement and technology is not a miraculous cure for all educational ailments that's this of course definitely it is being but it it cannot solve everything and because of that and uh, look at the second point which i just want to focus on that the effectiveness of the technology here yeah, the technology means tools not only the tools it includes the techniques and processes also the the effectiveness of the technology is directly proportional to the competence building and um, building the uh, positive intent and right attitude of the user this is very 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 important and it's it and many a times we are so 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 overtaken i just give you a small uh, simple example around uh, 3 years back it was happened with me i was invited for a mooks workshop and unfortunately when i uh, after reaching there i came to know that there was a uh, there is a major fire uh, breakdown at uh, some of the, the electrical installation and uh, the entire uh, power supply was uh, cut off and uh, there was a big hue and cry uh, about the faculty members who are sitting over there at where we came to attend this workshop being the first day and everybody was uh, so so much agitated saying that without power and without powerpoint and without internet what can we do so i because i i, I told only one thing to them look i am i am here as a resource person and you are there so let's try to see that uh, the, the, the uh, you know orientation program on moocs means uh, and switching on the laptop and switching on the internet connectivity and pressing something it can happen no there a lot of uh, planning need to be done a lot of understanding of uh, objectives we need to write down expected outcomes we need to write down and so on and so forth and believe me friends it took almost 24 almost 8 six to eight hours to complete the initial work of that by the time light has come so so many of them are of the opinion when when i was asked i said uh, and some of them even jokingly telling to me that sir there is no power and how can your powerpoint will work i said uh, leave it to me see when i come here for a workshop as a, as a resource person it is my responsibility to uh, to take you through already there is there is there is certain uh, um, planning has been done and yes of course powerpoint is good because so that you know we can focus on the discussion but even though the powerpoint is not there and uh, that that's the role of the resource person that's the role of the teacher we have been saying and this powerpoint kind of a business has started coming in maximum 10 years old but but when i started my career uh, 30 plus years back and uh, there is no such power and there is no powerpoint also so on and so forth but what i am trying to say that it is it, i think this is where the teacher uh, role is very very important to do it. so now look at the 21st century that's what uh, i'm i'm bringing i'm connecting to this particular slide the information is no longer at a premium we all know very well that thanks to the world wide web and lot of accessible videos demonstration simulation so on and so forth are available there right now hence not enough for a teacher to not to only transmit the information that's one one point only transmission of information is not uh, enough second point is at it as a teacher we cannot compete with the world wide web that's one point so it is necessary for a teacher to ensure that students are able to assimilate the information whatever it has been provided through appropriate and timely practices so hence uh, now you if you look at uh, the and these things are reflected in our educational policy uh, document also teachers role from the knowledge provider to the coach and mentor this is one of the important uh, change uh, in addition to that he can be a facilitator guide enabler and co learner also 
uh, teachers can have even more profound influence and effect on uh, student uh, learning. It now become more uh, learner centric and customized uh, requirement as such. So, so looking at uh, the scenario, uh, and the, the current scenario as such. So, this is what typically we have been looking at. Uh, so, so what is uh, what is what is uh, to be expected to happen? So in some cases it has been happening. Look at the first model. We call it as a centralized learning model uh, where we call it as a push mode of a learning from the uh, teacher point of view. Teacher will be there in the center and he keep on pushes. But what is uh, happening in other, uh, other second part, which is uh, uh, more important uh, for me is uh, the, the learner centric environment. In the learner centric environment uh, is, is that you, you can see the learner will be there in the center okay and uh, and uh, you know the teacher will create the environment in such a way that learning happens from these so many options you can see the this uh, the classroom is very much there classroom interaction with the teacher interaction with the uh, student their fellow uh, students interact uh, and the learning from the content is very much there apart from that there are so many options are available currently when i am talking about uh, the 4th September uh, um, 2021, there are so many options a student can learn, whether it's a three years of engineering, four years of, uh, sorry, three years of uh, graduation, four years of engineering, five years of medical and anything so on and so forth. So I think this is where the, the, the teacher need to provide the environment. This is where the institutions also working on to that. You can see that a lot of self-paced courses are available and uh, webcastings are there public internet is having so much good quality information and institutions are having a lot of knowledge based knowledge databases they have uh, um, they have subscribing it and 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 a other dalnevali bath make make this one as a as a, as a things which is students need to uh, use it on a regular basis virtual classes are going on third party data peer to peer mentoring online mentoring skill assessment and so many tools are available whether it's a qualitative data analysis or quantitative data analysis of some some virtual thing many a times what happened we couldn't able to conduct uh, the, uh, the we, we cannot call the students for the lab active lab activities uh, especially in my discipline of computer science or sciences uh, and uh, many other uh, so on and so forth so very good uh, quality the uh, videos are available what i'm trying to say that you can use those videos look at uh, this this is what i'm precisely am saying and i'm going to demonstrate also for example there is there is there is a video uh, which demonstrates a particular process uh, because since the students could not be able to access the facilities, at least as a time being, I'm again and again and saying that uh, the classroom and face-to-face -face classroom, lab is uh, definitely a requirement. But when when the till the situation was uh, eased, uh, not eased out, it's simply providing some kind of videos. You can convert that videos as an interactive videos. So, so what technique need to be followed so that what happened instead of blindly following the lecture for 30 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you can keep asking the questions on the top of the uh, YouTube videos so that, you know, the so student can go back and cross check whether uh, whatever the way the teacher is asking, the teacher can conduct a poll, teacher can conduct a quiz, teacher can conduct an open uh, ended questions and so on and so forth. That's how this uh, and uh, we, we can create this learner centricity uh, part of it, which brings to me one of the famous quote of Albert Einstein, which I quote, I do not teach anyone. I only provide the environment where uh, learning happens. I think this is a very, very important statement, friends. So setting up of the environment, it does not mean that, uh, uh, you know, students were left on their own. No, but every, whatever you could able to see in the earlier slide, every every step teacher is needed teacher is needed that means when you want uh, this to be implemented you need more and more teachers more and more committed teachers into this process and uh, so that's that's very very important uh, point which i just want to uh, bring to your kind attention okay 
so that's the issues which we talked about now we will we'll, we'll talk about uh, about this uh, the nep the reference to the blended learning and uh, and, and i try to understand uh, the 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 definitions and how do we uh, implement uh, this part of this so uh, this is the statement with nep made while promoting the digital learning and education the importance of face to face in person learning is fully recognized very important statement accordingly different effective models of blended learning will be identified for the appropriate replication for different subjects this is very very important statement with respect to the blended learning part let's try to understand what is this blended learning and what is this blend is all about i am not talking about blend means a 60% 40% exactly cut something here and there there is a video i will share it with uh, the organizers uh, prepared by one of our colleague and you can you can access that video uh, later uh, the term blended learning is generally applies to the practice of using both in class and out of the class learning experiences when teaching students so i am not using any word only because there is, there is some confusion has been created in earlier part so this is in class and out of the class so in class learning experiences plus out of the classroom learning experiences and uh, we 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 call it as 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 a blended learning experience and of course we call it as a hybrid this is a, a simple uh, instructional um, methodology and uh, teaching uh, a very 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 important and interesting instructional methodology which we need to be uh, used for this purpose as such okay okay i i i share this video uh, with you all uh, with the with the instructors later and uh, you know you can, you can use it so what is this in class learning consisting of okay the term in class learning i hope everybody is listening to this the term in class learning refers to all the activities learning activities within the classroom and in the labs with physical presence of students and teachers including but not limited to including but not limited to experiences such as uh, teachers lecture teacher explanations demonstration and large group activities such as brainstorming and discussions small group activities such as group work problem solving and experiments so this is about the in class activities which we all of us are comfortable and we have been doing that what about the out of the classroom uh, learning experiences the term out of the class learning refers to all the activities uh, outside the classroom of the lab uh, with no physical presence of students including but not limited to experiences such as and accessing the resources and uh, with the, with with or without because here in this uh, um, session i will be talking about uh, a, a Uh, the i have started with uh, uh, my own learning portal which is happening with the uh, with with the digital part of it and uh, so i'll be showing you that part of us so of course it could be like books newspaper journals pdf videos audio files web pages ebooks so on and so forth and getting involved in interaction with peers and community online collaboration group projects and so on and so forth you know so this is about the out of the classroom activity so what is important to me that um, as per this definition then how do we plan and while designing this what are the things need to be done and what is need to be expected the, the primary objective of this blended learning is uh, to make the process of learning not only impactful but also engaging interesting and challenging for the learner so to make the learning impactful engaging learn uh, interesting and challenging what are the competencies teachers must be having so what is the what is the way a teacher can start working on to this i think this is where the planning need to be done this is the way the classes need to be changed this is the way the so the moment we start getting into this kind of a mode and now the kind of boring kind of you know morning to evening classes and you know so much homework at home and not connected so those things will definitely will definitely ease doubt okay i am not saying definitely this can go up because uh, we had to we had to move on with this one so definitely the improvisation is very much required so uh, how do we make the things uh, engaging how do we make the things interesting how do we make the things challenging is again definitely is the need of the hour we all of us need to understand 
if you have any specific uh, uh, questions comments are required to be done please post it in the chat box so that <clears throat> i will try to answer those questions soon. so uh, one of the important statements i just want to make it here the blended learning is not a mere mix of uh, uh, in classroom and outside the classroom activities it's a well planned combination of meaningful activities in both the ends this is very very important one has to understand as such so you 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 need not uh, uh, simply connect it these two things and you know i heard in one of the uh, faculty development programs in uh, very in an engineering uh, institution i asked uh, you know they said no 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 we are using google classroom and we upload something i said what what are you uploading and how that whatever you have uploaded is it a necessary a precondition for the students to come to the lab or, or so what i'm trying to say that it's it's not a haphazardly thing we should not do it we should do it in such a way that uh, these two things are getting connected always keep in mind the learning uh, outcomes and learner centric instru instructional uh, environment these are the things one should be uh, keep in mind and uh, so there are uh, of course uh, we we only talk about uh, the the content part but there are two two important people teacher is exactly the teacher is going to be uh, playing a major major role the entire uh, to to make this one success and please friends again uh, uh, i may please be excused teacher is supreme teacher is supreme and all these things the technological related things will be supporting to the teaching learning process and they cannot be a teacher cannot be replaced please try to understand we require more teachers in this kind of uh, if you want to have a good quality things more and more teachers are required to be done so that is the one of the important message i just want to give so but then this the another aspect is the learner so what role the learner is going to play is he simply accessing the material and doing something i said no and uh, the the blended learning environment demands proactive learning on the part of the uh, part of the learner this is the first important statement so he learns to take the responsibility of self and peer learning out of the class as well as the while in the class the second problem is second important point is uh, changing the role of a learner from the passive learner to the problem solver so that you know uh, i think so how, how can how can a learner can change the teacher has to create that kind of uh, uh, situation so that uh, a student can able to look at the second uh, line learner needs to understand the change role and accept the challenges of new learning problems designed by the teacher you see now i think all these things it it it, it, it is done by the uh, teacher so that you know uh, that they can they can use it and of course uh, a, a decision maker like, there are a lot of pool of resources are available effective learning problems are there and appropriate scaffolding of the teacher which makes demands the learner role as an efficient decision maker this is uh, a very important uh, statement i want to make so it's it's so but what is important for us is again i am going going back to the albert einstein statement that uh, it, so it, i do not teach anyone i only provide the environment to learn so it is important for us to how do we set up that environment so one is inside the classroom we are all comfortable in doing it and what is important is outside the classroom also if you could able to create an environment uh, so that the things can happen okay so uh, the other question people generally used to ask me that can i go with a big bang approach with everything i said no let's let's start uh, uh, simple steps have a plan you know there are the seven easy and simple steps so take a baby step and one target at a time because uh, there are certain things related to planning part there are certain things related to the content part you know uh, need not be development of the content but yes there are certain tools we need to understand then delivery platforms outside the classroom and uh, you need you need a uh, you need a learning management systems like this we need to have and something inside the classroom how these two things are connected and uh, how do we transact the course okay so that you know connecting both outside and inside inside and outside this connect this uh, cycle has to happen and of course assessment preparation and uh, and interaction so these are the six important essential segments um, which require a step by step approach uh, to the uh, teachers to take this one and of course the advantages part is that 
so so what are the designing aspects uh, that first and foremost thing uh, before implementing this is what i've been trying to say that let's uh, let's look at the the curriculum let's look at the syllabus let's look at the curriculum understand the objectives and expected outcomes then you see that uh, uh, consider how the blended learning can best serve the instructional objectives and activities of that curriculum because you have something inside the classroom something out, out of the classroom then how these two things and of course very very important factor which which drives all these things is the pedagogy the methodology of teaching is definitely is going to change and different uh, pedagogical approaches are definitely going to useful i will talk about uh, in my further slides so the, the so that the instructors are taking the roles of facilitators of information while guiding the students towards the solution this is very very important uh, uh, statement as such they, they they need not confine the role only to information transformation and uh, you know guiding the students to what's the solution is is very very and and this logic applies in engineering of course we call it as outcome based education in in other disciplines also we talk about the and ugc is talking about learner uh, outcome based curriculum framework uh, uh, scenario and so on and so forth so uh, what is important uh, here uh, so uh, in order to make the blended learning to be successful very important both teachers and students has has to accept the reality that this is going to uh, change the way we have, we have been working number one and number two teacher has to create the environment in such a way that uh, and uh, you know releasing the control of learning to the students releasing the control in sense classroom is very important teacher is very integral component of teaching learning process learning uh, from the content learning with the students is very important but it is not enough if you look at the 360 degree development uh, the like parents are we are, we are all looking at that so that you know there are so many options are available the teacher has to a facilitate in such a way that student can learn um, and uh, from the several sources and all so what are the other aspects uh, while while designing your uh, blended learning class for the first point whatever the course which are doing it should be instructor led and the student centered this is and and all this as, as i already mentioned to you very clearly in the beginning itself the format the expectations and the instructions because there are two important uh, components are there one in the classroom uh, learning and one other one is out of the classroom learning so but because since these two things are there so the format the expectations the instructions should be clear and concise and and very very importantly last year you must have heard about uh, the honorable prime minister is uh, talking about uh, during the shiksha paro time uh, you know they said that the 21st century skills also need to be integrated with uh, and not only in the school education and the higher education uh, uh, courses and uh, so on and so forth so so something like the learning should be collaborative in nature so the, the biggest question comes so how can uh, how can suddenly we can promote no this cannot happen all of things can be said i will at the next slide i am going to show you uh, what are there are excellent collaborative learning tools are available simple to use the tools are available okay so uh, and there is another uh, talk about uh, the the third quadrant the discussion forum quadrant in the swayam which is not being used uh, to the extent possible by the students so so because because of the reason that they were not aware it's not people are asking they are thinking that it's only question answer session fine it's a question answer session but we can go something beyond that that is where uh, the technology the kind of flexibility is being provided and the coursework should maximize the participation flexibility and providing the student pacing so every student is good maybe they may be they, they may be slow starter they may be an average starter they may be gifted in some ways but uh, you know but what is important is that the course should facilitates that so in this blended mode what happened because this course material and the interactions are available outside the classroom uh, so that you know it provides the learner to learn on their own pace space and time and the uh, course should foster the team building skills and support the critical thinking and uh, you know not only not only inside the classroom uh, the uh, large large group interactions or small group interactions to do this 
this in the in the outside the classroom like there are excellent tools are available which could be part of the learning management systems and where this process can be properly implemented and the last part a same size shirt uh, may not be fit for everyone similarly the activities and assessments and should also uh, should also account for the different uh, uh, learning styles i think uh, um, that, that 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 kind of a flexibility also the system uh, provides so if you look at uh, the the core components uh, i i to make the thing simple i made it uh, like a you know three sides of a triangle uh, first one side is uh, the hardware component the second side is the software component the third side is a human wear component that the teacher again so hardware yes of course we know very well the laptops desktops smartphones uh, webcams microphones writing devices i think these are all going to be a new normal for some time and uh, I, I completely understand that everyone cannot able to afford it. I think I think probably uh, the situation demands in such a way that definitely um, the uh, National Educational Technology Forum (NETF) is uh, I think definitely working on uh, this particular thing so that the things may be, will be definitely going to make it uh, um, possible and everyone can able to afford it. And uh, second point is about the softwares. So basically, because since I'm I'm talking about uh, how to how these two things need to be blend. There are two important uh, um, the learning platforms that are available. One is about the synchronous learning. For example, right now what is happening is the classes are happening in this uh, using the tools like Skype, Zoom, and Google Meets, Zitsis, and so on and so forth. But what is important to me is this. The synchronous learning happens during the real time face to face where the students can interact, discuss, and share the perspectives to all the content which they have st uh, studied and absorbed during the asynchronous mode. Asynchronous is basically meant for outside the classroom activities. So, and in the asynchronous, I think why I've been saying that, first of all, the conceptual understanding is very much important. So once, once we can create, uh, once we can sensitize, orient uh, our teachers about this, then, then we can show the software tools then they will be having a lot of impact. They, they, they could able to visualize it. And so naturally, the, the teacher is a creative object, a teacher is an innovative object. So definitely they can improvise uh, all these things. So the asynchronous learning, of course, all the learning management systems uh, uh, for the current uh, batch, of course, not, not limited to this, but digital part only, I'll be trying, trying to that. The objectives, the asynchronous learning includes the activities which students can pursue beyond the classroom public uh, uh, schedule. So what is the main objective? This helps to build the content knowledge and allows the students to apply the learning in creative ways. Means uh, it's not only the theoretical part, like uh, we, we all of us are doing all these things. I need not explain again. Like uh, whenever we introduce a new 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 topic, we we go for three different levels. One is the basics. Once the basics are understood, we go for the advanced uh, part of uh, uh, that topic. Then we go for the application level. And because since uh, the focus is more on the application level, most of the teachers are doing their best to provide the application level of understanding, so that uh, when when the student completes that particular course, he will be having not only the uh, basics level, basic level of understanding, and he can have an application level of understanding. Uh, what is what is the current uh, scenario is being provided in the blended learning environment the teachers can provide a nice videos because there are so many videos are available so many resources are available in the public domain so so what is the need of the hour is collecting and collating those information and creating it uh, if at all if this teacher wants to create a specialized uh, video kind of thing, there are so many easy to use tools are available what is the advantage of uh, asynchronous learning? If you could able to engage the students, and again, this is this is a, a effort driven process. Once we, we once we take the confidence of the students, we can tell them that look, this is the way you should be doing, and uh, the assessment is not uh, is a comprehensive continuous assessment kind of a thing. And the sixty minutes or ninety minutes of the class, whatever it, it will be having fruitful interaction. Definitely, I can tell you, friends, the, the class will be a totally different class as such. So the, the ensuring that uh, I have highlighted their last two lines, uh, that ensuring the maximum and effective utilization of the time uh, marked for the live classes in face-to-face -face interaction and discussions. 
and of course the tools which is facilitating the the digital tools which is facilitating the asynchronous learning are moodle google classroom canvas edmodo blackboard edmodo and blackboard are proprietary and moodle google classroom and uh, canvas are free open source tools what is the advantage again i said convenience of access student can learn on their own pace space and time this is very very important okay and uh, second point is it support the collaborative learning and collaborative learning is very much need of the hour because because of course teacher involvement is very much there that, that's what i've been saying that our role is not only confined to the 60 minutes of lecture and we can also uh, you know go beyond that so that uh, a student can take the advantage of uh, uh, you know uh, learning uh, beyond the classroom and apply the knowledge whatever you have been sharing and so my there is there is another big question people generally used to ask me that uh, sir what are uh, how can we promote uh, this collaborative learning and user generated content so many things we, i think most of us uh, most of you must be must be doing let me let me bring uh, those things to your uh, kind attention here look at this uh, uh, simple ict tools uh, which is uh, facilitating the collaborative learning and user generated content like blogging blogger.com is one such tool we are facilitating that sticky notes now uh, the jamboard in delhi at least i know very well in both school education and higher education many faculty members are using this collaborative learning tool like jamboard and they are giving lot of projects to create this so so once the student can able to comfortably manage this and you know tomorrow when you are implementing a moodle kind of a learning management system it will be much easier for them to do the needful as such and uh, something like shared document tools like google docs google sheet google slides of course we have been using it Uh, uh, apart from this either pad scatter spoke and idea boards is also very much important to do uh, concept mapping mind mapping comprehensive activity tools and some of the tools i mentioned here like padlet miro google drawing are almost very simple tools where it facilitates and uh, this uh, this particular kind of uh, mode of learning so what is important is it's not simply to say about the uh, collaborative learning and students are why the students are not participating in the discussion forum kind of an activities and what is important to me that you can create uh, this kind of an environment uh, so that um, when we start using these things outside the classroom activities and once the students get to know and we can create uh, the, the 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 kind of um, uh, assessments and the projects and can do this that that the students can take a benefit out of it as far as the teachers are concerned again again and again again and again i'm roaming around the teacher friend because it is it is very very important to strengthen our teacher it is very important to sensitize our teacher it's very important to support our teacher it is very important to orient our teacher teacher is indispensable to the teaching learning process and and assessment process and it is very important that we need to support to the extent possible uh, whatever the whatever the way we want to do that that's very very important um, so so what are the things are expecting from of course uh, good subject knowledge the domain knowledge is very important and if if you want if if he if he need to be if he was asked to implement in a a course in a blended learning mode environment the first and foremost thing uh, the necessary training need to be imparted uh, to understand the complete ecosystem the third important point is acquire the necessary competencies for so because as you know very well that whatever i have explained till now it is it is completely a a, a process um it which which require uh, certain basic understanding so how do we design the course how do we develop the course content and what about the delivering you know this blended learning course and how do we integrate the in in class activities with the outside the classroom activities um, you know such things need we, we need to provide the training both conceptual as well as uh, and hands on uh, demonstration plus hands on and course planning and organization verbal and non verbal presentation skills collaborative team work questioning strategies involving the students and coordinating their activities these are some of the activities we do now the next important point uh, which is very important uh, for this uh, tools is uh, pedagogies so there are so many several pedagogical uh, approaches are very useful in the blended learning model but uh, two approaches only i'll just try to um, because <coughs> because of the paucity of the time 
again and again, I'm requesting you don't wait till the end to ask the question. And whenever, wherever you have any particular thing is required to be understood, kindly post it in the chat box. I will answer that. So one of the important uh, pedagogical approach, uh, which, which is having a lot of uh, impact on the uh, flipped classroom is in, in the blended learning environment is the flipped classroom. Um, moving the teacher from the sage on the stage to the guide on the site. As you know very well, it is a pedagogy first approach to teaching in which the course materials are introduced outside of the class and in class time is repurposed for uh, uh, inquiry application and uh, assessment in order to meet the individual interest of the people as such. So, um, and uh, you know, uh, Okay, let me let me try to answer. There's a question outside the class learning is necessary to no, not necessary to be online. I think if you if you recall what did I said, and, and you know uh, this one of the component is digital component, and there are many other components are there where we could able to uh, use it. But because other components the students could not be able to move on, so what is important uh, is that. <coughs> you can uh, um, uh, you can use the digital component it, because it is now looking at little uh, uh, little is primary to uh, all of them otherwise of course that is one of the component only and uh, you can you can use it uh, in other methods also uh, there are certain important steps are there friends and uh, because of the paucity of the time i am not uh, if time permits i will come back because there are certain very important uh, let me let me spend a quick uh, two minutes on this even though, but this is a very important uh, step everyone has to understand. <clears throat> Basically, there are totally six to seven steps are there. And uh, so, so what is what is important uh, um, uh, is that first of all, uh, they should fall into the, uh, the, then the teacher is going to implement uh, this uh, flip mode of teaching. Um, so first of all, the lesson plan is should be clear, objectives should be clear, expected outcomes should be clear. And uh, so then search the content and the content in terms of videos and uh, text material and so on and so forth. Uh, but I'm not saying that in the first instance, you had to create the content because there is so much good quality content is available under the digital initiatives of government of India. Like you take Swayam courses, good quality archival content is available. Uh, Swayam Prabha, <coughs> 39 <coughs> free DTH channel uh, content is available and uh, National Digital Library, EPG Patshala, uh, UGC MOOCs got uh, around 150 PG courses content, 250 plus uh, UG course content is available. Uh, you should use uh, FOSSI, Sakshat, IIT Bombay Spoken Tutorial, Virtual Labs. There are so many options the Government of India has provided for us. So we should, first of all, we should use, we should start using this and, uh, and then, and then, then of course, then try to give this kind of orientation to the students, uh, which, which, um, which reminds me a small, my grandfather used, always used to say <clears throat> to my father, he said, being both of them are teachers. Um, he is always used to say that uh, whatever you say to your child, he will not do it. But whatever you practice, and when, when in, in front of your child, definitely he will follow you. I think that's 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 where uh, uh, these things, friends, need to be taken into that. If you start doing it, then the, your students definitely will follow. And only thing is, you need to convince the students saying that, look, this is a betterment for you. You know, this is the way I'm looking. And uh, most of my time, I'll be spending on... Uh, the practical orientation and, uh, and, and and looking at the application mode of interaction tomorrow when the colleges are open we can spend more time on practice uh, looking at going uh, do using the labs and uh, using the, um, the the you know the field work and so on and so forth i think before before going to the field work and all suddenly anytime the colleges will open we can create that kind of a thing second thing is about the creative commons uh, sources Creative Commons is a process through which a good quality, high quality content is available in the public domain with certain licenses. So I think that is the one of the important thing every teacher need to understand. <coughs> like YouTube has an excellent uh, Creative Commons uh, the, uh, reusable content. We should use Vimeo is there, TeacherTube is there. As far as images are concerned, of course, instead of using uh, simply going the Google and uh, downloading the image left, right and center, 
and they try to use the advanced image search and try to see that creative commons content like similarly like pixabay flickr pixels you know these are all the platforms where you can have a good quality royalty free images are available because these these things are very much required for you to um, to prepare your own uh, content whether it's a ppt content or ppt facilitated to prepare the videos kind of a thing uh, as far as the e text is concerned of course uh, google has the advanced all the all the general browsers are having advanced search option <coughs> some of the sites like bc campus open stacks athabasca university press and so on and so forth if you visit my site professor kesrinivas.in where i have given extensive uh, collection of oer material which has been done by across the world there are, and as far as the <coughs> sorry audio is concerned there are uh, good audio sites where royalty free uh, background scores are available like if you go to the free sound you can use the jamendo kind of a thing so on and so forth is there so this is about the first one second uh, and uh, the second point is uh, the if the appropriate content suitable for the class is not available then develop the content okay so <coughs> if it is not meeting your requirements as such <coughs> so there are simple and easy to use uh, uh, list of softwares and mobile apps are available <clears throat> i'm just showing you uh, some of them on, on my screen and these details are also available and these are all these simple and easy to use softwares <clears throat> and i'm not saying that uh, you know they they don't they do not uh, have uh, if you look at that uh, the uh, you know the free part of it like for example audacity audacity is a wonderful audio software where uh you know recording and editing is also available and uh, something like screen recording you have uh, screen castify free cam and of course video recording and of course there are, there are so many options are there but few of the options are <coughs> are very much uh, useful like presentation tube recorder if you have windows 10 you can download the editor uh, you sorry you can download the recorder you can shoot the video of 10 minutes 15 minutes with the help of ppt you can annotate that and you can highlight there are so many so things and of course they are providing a free option for you to upload if you do not have windows uh, 10 operating system uh, with windows 7 and windows 8 you can use the uh, the uh, what i mean to say the <clears throat> uh, the, the uh, google chrome uh, uh, extension uh, you can upload uh, you know what i'm trying to say now when you look get to the current requirements there are so many options like uh, of course we are all of us are using screen customatic obs studio you know of course for the mobile uh, uh, users so th these are all the tools <coughs> which are very much available uh, for the faculty look at the learning management system uh, genomio genomio i think most of the people are using it and this is one of this uh, one of the tool uh, which facilitates and it has uh, helped a, a very good handy tool during this pandemic period and uh, for the outside the uh, classroom activities this could be used uh, um, very very easily and effectively as such uh, into this okay and uh, coming back to the uh, the uh, uh, you know so what is the third step as far as uh, this is concerned teachers must ensure that students read and view the study material i think this is where the role of a teacher is very important it's not like they're simply you provided the material students have not so if you connect that if you if you, if you convert your face to face class after uh, after providing the necessary resources into an application mode definitely students will come and, and, and nowadays students are more looking for the application rather than the theoretical component of that. But theory and uh, developing the basics is very important. No technology work without the very basics as such. And uh, teacher must so to support and uh, to encourage the student. Teacher must support a um, you know um, a comprehensive continuous assessment method. I'm saying that uh, you cannot touch with the external assessment procedure. At least there is an internal assessment is there. Uh, there are 20 marks, 25 marks, 30 marks are there. You can you can give you to to support the student and you can provide. So what is expected from the teacher point of view? Of course, whatever we talk about the learner point of view, the teacher point of view is the it, it, they should confine to the um, they, they should focus on applied learning activities and more higher order thinking tasks and uh, you know uh, or, or, 
Okay, there is a question by one of the participants. Uh, so, does it mean that in flip classroom material are given before the hand so that they can come? Yes, exactly, exactly. And you you need to provide the reading material and uh, well in advance uh, so that it should be so your outside the classroom activities can be connected to the inside the classroom activities in class activities. So. And again, that material is again, I'm talking about if you can get a good quality material, which supports the learning of the students to understand the basics. So you can focus on the advanced part of it in the in-class. Even after pro providing that, if students could not able to understand something like that, you, you, you get that can be created. So what is more important to me is the step five. So that so with, since uh, this process is on, uh, teacher must uh, teacher is de, uh, expected to divide the apply, uh, divide the time to applied learning activities, whatever has been provided, and more higher order thinking tasks, and uh, uh, to support, encourage, motivate, and uh, uh, the students. Uh, they, they should be, you know, of course, these learning management systems are having uh, uh, certain components uh, to interact with the learners. But that is not enough. If you ask me my personal opinion, one should go with the extended uh, uh, hand holding support with the 24 by 7 support is very much required as such friends. This is about the flip mode of teaching. The another method uh, which is very important is about the learner uh, uh, centric approach. And uh, <clears throat> Yes, of course, the, the, the blend, in the blended learning, blended learning and flipped classroom can go together. Blended learning consisting of two important components. One is inside the classroom, another one is outside the classroom. The flip is a pedagogical approach where we are providing the material outside the classroom and getting connected with the class. That's, that's where it is. Uh, yeah, and uh, there is there is one more interesting thing. If, uh, will it not increase the screen time of the learner? See, I'm not only talking about outside the classroom means a digital and non-digital activities also. I'm not right now the non-digital activities of meeting the people, going to the libraries and going other things is not feasible because of the practical situation. And uh, it's, it's not that. And many a times what happened, I used to ask the people to write down the points. So, so it all depends on how do we take it. <clears throat> so it's not only confined to the digital time, it's also beyond that. Okay. And uh, the next point is that uh, next pedagogical approach is that the learner centric move. This is again, very interesting uh, uh, pedagogical application developed by our IIT Mumbai um, faculty, uh, where uh, a model, this is basically a model for planning, designing and conducting learner centric. <clears throat> so why this learner centricity is more important? There are uh, several aspects are there, but uh, there are there are something like very interesting. You have a video. See, basically, we, what is important for us? We are providing a videos to the student, which is provide, which is uh, facilitating the passive learning. What I am saying that convert that videos into activity based. Convert that videos into activity based. I'll just take a minute, if you permit me, friends. I'll show you how how this process will be done. For example, for example, uh, let me uh, let me access. Uh, uh, so, what is the, how do we convert this video into? What are the simple steps? Let me uh, demonstrate to you. The step number one: go to your, uh, you know, online, uh, you know, YouTube.com and uh, try to find out uh, the video. I, I just want to find out the uh, computer programming. This is one of the video which I required. Okay, I'll, I'll just take a simple video, which is uh, uh, Professor Patak video or any video from, okay, this video uh, I, I will take. Okay, so uh, before, taking, before taking this video, before taking this video, uh, what I'm expecting is, I request the faculty members to go through the video thoroughly. Because this author in this 21 minutes, 21 seconds video must, uh, I, I know very well, that's what I've been saying, around three important topics he must have talked. Okay, three important uh, topics, uh, he explained it. So uh, every topic is around, uh, carrying around seven minutes. Okay, so after the seven minutes, you can put a, um, uh, you can put a, <clears throat> A quiz on the top of it. Uh, uh, again, after 14 minutes, you can put a poll, or uh, after at the end, you can put them open-ended questions. So that what happened when when you when you create this kind of environment, all of, all of us, including the students, are also tuned to this passive mode of learning. With this approach, what we can do is the student can go back, 
review i'm just explaining to the simple process so what is important first of all open open the video which you are going to provide as a as a reading material to the students first of all second important thing is uh, look at the video thoroughly and then and, and read the video then decide on where are these places the interactivity can be provided that's the second important step the third important step is there are several uh, sites are available one of the simple site which is uh, uh, which 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 where we can provide this interactivity is uh, vgr.co <clears throat> okay if you go to the site and you can see there is a login option on the left hand right hand side and you can log in with your uh, gmail account <coughs> <coughs> and uh, you logged in with your gmail account then you could able to access the <coughs> dashboard of it you can see there are so many videos i have created and shared with my students and uh, there these are all the videos available in the youtube <clears throat> on the top of it i have provided the uh, interactivity to the students so that i converted that passive videos into activity based so how this process can be done look at the first step first option is new video just click on this new video and it says you can add a new video here so enter the link to your video once we import it we can start adding the interactions so uh, whatever you have copied the youtube url you can paste it here and uh, click on continue so it depends on the speed of your uh, internet connectivity that video can gets imported into this now almost the video as it has been imported uh, uh, here in my case as such of course first and foremost thing well, while the video is uh, getting imported i can i can put uh, i can i can uh, give uh, i can give the problem solving i can give the name of this video problem solving using no i basically this video is a pl programming logic technique okay so i have updated this name and you can see the, there is there is there is the sharing option is also available there if you look at this video now how can we create this and of course we can embed it also you can see and this video when i when i move my cursor if you look at the below this video the when when, when i move and the, and and there is there is a pop up is also moving across okay so what is happening is you can create a quiz you can create a poll you can create a response you can <coughs> create a call for action and all these things can happen on the top of the video uh, top of the youtube video you have provided for example and around uh, 7 minutes uh, exactly um, i think 6:50 seven, 7:01 okay if i click on the 701 i want to uh, i'll simply click on uh, quiz part as such so uh, I, i can and, and please try to understand this is not the assessment this is only to review and revise what are the things he has completed by chance if he could not able to solve, answer it properly and uh, you know the student can go back and revise it and come back it because because as again i am telling you this has been connected with your uh, in in classroom activities also i said i said why plt is uh, what is plt i can say what is uh, plt and i can uh, say program as a option to logic and uh, and you can say the technique so on and so forth and simply as i save this so now you can see that and uh, you know there there is there is a there is a uh, there is a interactive option has been created so suddenly what happened at particular uh, particular point of time suddenly this video will stop over there if you look at uh, if you preview it because uh, time pass time constraint i'm just rushing out uh, uh, some of the things so this is the video okay i'll just go up to this okay now you just see what is happening okay and uh, the moment the moment it reaches the that exactly that uh, uh, seventh seventh minute see the moment uh, the moment it reaches the seventh level a uh, seven seven minute uh, zero one second so on so forth suddenly there was there was a pop up has been and because here since i have uh, added the quiz um you know the quiz component is there and the student can also record all these things the teacher can record and force these these things can be recorded so that when uh, when he go back to the class 
and he can see that what is what was the understanding whether this particular video has been uh, facilitated the learning of the learners and did the learner can able to understand so there are so on and so forth uh, uh, so many options are available and which which we can take the advantage of this and uh, if you look at uh, if you look at the uh, this one and what is the way to record the students interactions you can see uh, the last there is an option called gate video okay and if you can enable this gate video and uh, and share this link with the students this link this link uh, this shareable link with the students either in the learning management system or in any other uh, teaching learning process so uh, when when um, when when this open student has to force to enter their name and their email address so that uh, all their responses will be recorded in the uh, the open uh, sheet form and uh, this process can able to uh, make make sure uh, uh, this 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 can be happening over there i think th these are all the some of the techniques uh, we all of us can use and uh, to to sum up uh, there are there are few important uh, things which i just want to um, uh, take a minute uh, to to explain and uh, one is one of the important uh, thing is about uh, managing the cloud storage i think we should i think most of us have started doing but i want every one of us should put our data whatever the uh, for the teaching uh, for, for uh, you know, learning as well as the the assessment related thing that you know it's try to use the google uh, any cloud storage the google drive one drive dropbox and so on and so forth uh, so that from there connecting to the your learning management system or facilitating the students the outside the classroom whether in the collaborative learning platform and so on and so forth is much easier and few more things i think most of you people in youtube whatever just now i explained about how do we search the content so we i i i i, I wish that uh, every one of us should try to contribute our uh, the videos whatever material but uh, there are some apprehensions uh, you know as content uh, disseminators what need to understand we need to understand very clearly about the privacy options you know what is public what is private what is unlisted and uh, what is the significance of giving the good keywords how many licenses are available you know what is the need to put our own licenses into our own requirements and uh, our videos into creative commons category do we need to enable the uh, embedding the video uh, you know the moment you embed the video what happens the video uh, the youtube video runs in your course so that you know you can take a call whether this video which we it is available in the public domain has been facilitated our students learning or not the analytics can show that that way okay and uh, and of course comments there is again a, 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 you know a, a apprehension that you know comments so you can you can disable or you can enable the comments it all depends on the interest of that of course i have talked about the comprehensive collaborative learning tools so what is uh, let me take a minute to uh, summarize uh, the so what are the practices we should put on place to make uh, the um, you know these are all the practices where, where the teacher only can do and start doing it uh, preparation of the institutional policy of technology for teaching learning once you attend this workshop and once you go back and try to give a detailed presentation to your faculty saying that look this is what it was we were told and these are all the possibilities are there and uh, you you the second point is that you can start preparing your own uh, uh, online teaching learning manual and uh, depends on the uh, type of the inputs you have been received uh, during this workshop and first of all you start yourself make online teaching an integral part of your curriculum uh, to the extent don't don't make a big bang approach let's start a small thing like outside the classroom inside the classroom and develop modalities for e assessments uh, i have uh, i have told you that there are formative assessment tools are available summative assessment tools are available there are so many tools are available that we can use it people are talking about tesmos people are talking about fizzy kind of a thing there are so many but again at the same time try to integrate those things in such a way and develop modalities for collaborative learning environment it's not only your learning our learning matters a lot and uh, promote an online teaching learning community to support and counsel to each other so so because tomorrow with this exposure you can come to the uh, you can uh, offer uh, from your institution good online course 
or uh, the the hundred plus institutions who are offering uh, the online courses, you can also uh, can join over there. And similarly, the MOOCs courses, they are also looking for a good quality, passionate, uh, committed uh, uh, domain expert to get joy associated with them. Publish the best practices of technology enabled teaching learning on a regular basis. Uh, that's all I wish to say, friends. And uh, to, to just one last statement I wish to say again and again here. Uh, technology is an enabler. Technology is a facilitator. But at the same time, technology and the teacher is uh, a far, far superior than the technology. Technology should uh, uh, support the uh, teacher to to reach the unreached, especially in the current scenario. And whatever the way, but what is important is because there are so many uh, minds are there, uh, which, we are, which, uh, which are looking for. Let's try to see that um, what best can be possible and how do we improvise? So blended learning is one of the model which is being need to be done. And only thing is it has to put into practice. I must tell you that it's, it's easy to implement. It's not difficult. But what is more important is we should take it one step at a time uh, to uh, to get the benefit, best benefit out of it. That's all. Uh, any questions, comments, if you have, and I'm, I'm ready to answer. I already I tried to answer some of the questions uh, in the chat box. And if you have any specific things out there, I will try to answer it. Uh, thank you so much, sir. I, uh, is your presentation over? Yeah, that's what I've been saying, Anidhi. My presentation is over and I, I'm waiting for the comments. I already answered some of the questions. Yes, sir. And if, so, if any uh, questions are there, then, yeah. Yes, sir. All along, I've been checking the chat box and I haven't seen any questions except for appreciation and words of uh, congratulatory messages to you. So, I, uh, so if there are any questions that the participants want to ask then uh, you can probably raise your hand and i can make you the co-host and you can directly interact with sir or if you could post your uh, you know questions in the chat box then uh, uh, sir can take it one by one uh, like he has been taking all along this uh, session uh, ganesh prabhu dr ganesh prabhu okay i will just make you the co-host Okay. Go ahead, Ganesh. Ganesh please. Prabhu, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. Sir, uh, I'm asking one question that uh, you told that blend, in blended learning, uh, in class learning is there and outside the class. Now, UGC has now recommended the 60 40 ratio, that is 60% offline class and 40% online class. So is it uh, compulsory that we have to take online class as a 40%? No, this is what I'm saying. Actually, initially they talked about that, uh, but uh, uh, some of the things I, I, I can't even reveal it at this current juncture because you may be receiving it the guidelines shortly. Uh, some of the papers we cannot cut exactly 60, 40, 50, 50, 70, 30 kind of a thing. Cannot be done. Yes, there are two components. Outside the classroom activities where uh, digital and non-digital part is there. So because the current situation where students cannot move out of their houses because of the pandemic situation, we may be using this method of uh, uh, the learning management system and other digital forms to interact. Not necessarily that because but what is important is if you could create uh, that kind of an environment, sir, what is the advantage is? The outside the classroom can be connected with the in-class activities more effective. Because right now what is happening, one of the component is uh, the, uh, the, the, the learning management system, using the learning management system <clears throat> or other digital means. What is the advantage what I am talking about? So if you complete your class, you can leave something for the hands-on mode or uh, you know uh, applying apply level of understanding. So where the student can do? You can suggest some of the tools and techniques, but whatever the tools and techniques which are, if you use the methods, digital tool methods outside the class, outside the learning management system, you cannot track the progress of the students. 
so my suggestion would be i think that the once the situation is out the outside the classroom percentage can be reduced uh, the digital component of this can be reduced but i can tell you my experience says uh, it it's not like somebody is asking the screen time and all i encourage the students to use to sit in the library most of the time rather than uh, using the mobile phones and uh, this, this, this kind of a thing so it all depends on how the students can take it uh, uh, but 60 40 is not uh, uh is not that much and in the context of this uh, covid scenario they must have said and because i was also um, um, going through that uh, document which has been prepared so there are there are certain certain changes uh, uh, which is being uh, prescribed uh, in the final guidelines which you will be receiving short so actually there is an anxiety among our friends that uh, if you cut the offline class to 60% uh then uh, the uh, the anxiety about the workload of the teachers so nothing nothing sir actually nothing is going to change because again i'm telling you <clears throat> there is there is no no need to worry about that it it has been properly balanced it has been properly balanced it's because of the current situation like you understand that have you ever thought that uh, almost 2 years we have been teaching online but the current mode of thing the current mode of situation um, demanding from across india is uh, forcing us to do it. but my point is that if you want and the another biggest problem is monotony boring and students are saying parents are saying community is saying so my point is that if you can use some of the digital methods so that you know once the teacher interact they can do it or with the basic introduction basic level of understanding uh, within one hour student a teacher can demonstrate a tool a technique which facilitates their application level of understanding or can ask some of the group of students as a group work can do i think this kind of an out of the box processes need to follow so that to to encourage the students to start using it this is my question thank you sir yeah <clears throat> uh thank you sir uh, there is a question uh by uh, this to me by dr sudhish kumar and uh, his question is what according to you is the best proportion of online and offline mode of teaching i think i think uh, if you ask me uh, that that's left to the discipline wise you know not necessarily nobody can because like for example i am a professor of computer science i can't tell the, nobody the outsiders can tell that if this part should be taught in online this part should be taught offline i think it it's 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 not it's not the cutting the cake into two parts it's a blend it's a blend so what is the blend when 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 we can see the nice colors so we want to see that what is the blend which we are expecting not exactly 60 40 50 60 or 70 30 that's not the one but again again i i'll, I'll say that that should be left to the discipline that should left to the institutions to take a call and uh, what best could be done and again uh, like you know uh, in, in in currently what is happening in our normal system before the covid everything like basic advanced and application <clears throat> everything has to be done in the university and the colleges in the labs now since there is a of out of the classroom activities we can shift to transfer some of the activities to the outside the classroom uh, so that you know students can take the benefit out of it so we can spend whatever the limited time we have in either for example what we have been hearing that students can come to the computer labs for two days or doing uh, lab activities for one day two days kind of a thing so suddenly when the student comes so we can engage them Uh, to to prepare them to use the this kind of facilities using the outside the act, outside the classroom activities that's where i am looking at uh, thank you sir uh, i believe there aren't any uh, questions uh, to be addressed by sir so uh, we will uh, end the session here and thank you so much sir for sparing your time and delivering su uh, such an interactive and an engaging lecture and all your presentations were full of uh, examples and uh, techniques which i'm sure the participants would have really enjoyed looking at and uh, you also demonstrated uh, um, uh, some of your work which is really very um, uh, very endearing and very precious to all of us thank you so much sir for your time and we do hope that we could continue uh, uh, with you uh, with with such an association with you in the future as well sir 
So thank you so much for your time, sir. And some of the participants are asking for the PowerPoint presentation, and they can visit my site, Professor K. Shrinivas. dot in, and uh, all my presentations, all the papers and whatever the work it is there, it is available there. They can they can access it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, uh, dear participants, we are uh, through with this live session, and uh, we can exit now. So, thank you so much for your time.